Well, folks, just call me Al Borland because we're rocking the flannel today as we go about doing something that I've been waiting to do for a while now on the show, and that is to make my first official prediction as to how the 2024 presidential election will shake out. It's going to be very, very interesting, so buckle up and get ready because this is Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. America is no longer one nation under God. Are you ready to fight for a revival? Well, then you've come to the right place. Welcome to Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. We will be predicting how each state is going to vote this November, based off of my opinion, obviously, but also in the swing states, we'll use recent polling as an indicator. For fun, we may also compare how these states hold up compared to my Senate map I made in a video I made just a little while ago. That is to say, will those states vote Republican for president and Senate, or will they be split ticket? Will they vote Republican in one and Democrat in another? That'll be fun to do. Another note before we get started, of course, that uh, polls don't mean a whole lot in terms of final election results this far out, but they can give us a reasonably accurate idea of how the electorate is feeling at the moment. Um, trying to predict an election seven months out based on polling is like trying to predict the weather seven months out. So it doesn't give us a whole lot of information, but it's the best we've got. So we're going to we're gonna do that today, and we're going to try to predict it based off polling in swing states, partially. Part of it's going to be my opinion as well. Uh, and of course, all these exercises today are done under the assumption that the Dems won't just steal it. Uh, they certainly rigged it in 2020 uh, and might very well have stolen it. Biden may still have won legitimately, even without the rigging, but I'm certainly not convinced. So either way, for the sake of today's video, let's assume 2024 will be legit, and let's get into it. And of course, don't forget fightandrevive.com. The show's new website is up. It's a great place to find the podcast succinctly. And that's very good. I got that one out that time. Succinctly. Nice word. And it's a good place to find uh, all the show's resources, the schedule, and all that good stuff up in one easy to find place and of course the big feature of it is that it has written articles by yours truly and hopefully soon some other people as well uh, about some different stuff political news and analysis opinion sports we got it all so with that note out of the way check out fightandrevive.com linked in the description after the video is over okay here we go <clears throat> so our rankings are going to work as follows uh, we'll rank the states as i'm going to get it up here Safe, likely, leans, or tilt. A stake gets ranked safe if I think a candidate will win with 10 points or more. Likely will be 5 to 9 points. Leans, 1.5 to 4 points. Tilt, 0. 0.1 points to 1.4 points, approximately. Okay, that's how our rankings are going to work. Let's get started with Maine. And so with Maine, uh, Maine and Nebraska are the two we're going to start with because they have a split voting system, as opposed to allotting all their electoral votes based on just who won the presidential, uh, the, the popular vote. They split it up based on the state and the uh, elect, uh, excuse me, congressional districts as well. So, for example, Maine, we know, is going to, um, we'll wait with that, actually. Maine is going to go in the first district, uh, safe Democrat, because that's the urban area of Maine. Uh, district 2 is the rural district, so we're going to put that in Leans Republican based on historical trends, but... Uh, the first district has a lot more population than the second, so Biden will win the state of Maine as a whole. <clears throat> now, Nebraska, it's almost the polar opposite. In Nebraska, Trump will win the state easily. Whoops, went a little too far with that. Trump will win the state easily. He will also win the first and the third congressional district, but number two, the second congressional district, is where Omaha is located. That often goes Democrat, so we're going to put it in leans Democrat, probably by about two to three points. Okay. Now let's get down to serious business. We're going to go with our safe blue states going down the eastern seaboard. Maybe we'll go up. We've got uh, D.C. We've got Maryland. And you know what? Just for the sake of quickness here, I'm just going to turn that back to that for the time being. We've got uh, Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Vermont, New York. We've got Illinois. And I'm going to make sure, consult my notes to make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, Washington, Oregon, California, and Hawaii. I think that's our... All our safe blue states right there. Uh, yeah, so obviously the coast is where, you know, your uh, elite like to hang out, and they tend to vote Democrat. So meanwhile, our safe red states, there are more safe red states, but most of them don't have the same sort of uh, electoral vote count. So we've got Alaska, of course, mustn't forget Alaska. And then we've got Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, Nebraska, we already did Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, Iowa. There's a lot of them. I'm trying to keep them all in order here. Indiana, Kentucky, West Virginia, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, 
South Carolina, and yes, even Florida, the once swing state, the once battleground Florida, I think is going to go to Trump by over by 10 points or more. I know that's bold, but that's why you watch the shows for bold takes. So just like that, we only have a few states left that are, I don't think anyway, that are um, not safe states for one candidate or the other, and that's pretty much to be expected. And of course, we have 188 electoral votes for Democrats, 162 for Republicans. So let's start here with our non-battleground states, starting with Colorado. Um, Colorado is going to be likely Democrat, probably by about eight-ish points. We're going to go ahead and put it there. So not quite safe. Um, the Democrats should win it pretty, pretty handily. It's getting increasingly blue. But I don't think it's going to be a huge landslide. I think it could be closer than usual. So we'll put it in likely Democrat. Um, could be five to six points, but I'm guessing more like eight points for the Dems there. Uh, New Mexico is also going to be a likely Democrat state. Um, it's been reliably Democrat for a while. Um, probably not quite. We could see it edging into safe Democrat, but we're probably just going to leave it in likely for now as we're trying to guess conservatively with these numbers. Uh, Virginia, my home state, unfortunately, is also likely Democrat. Uh, Virginia is probably going to be... Uh, I could certainly see Virginia as leans Democrat by about four points or so. That's how the polling is currently indicating. But um, based on knowing Virginia politics like I do in the Virginia GOP, I don't have high hopes for Trump in Virginia. So I'm going to put Virginia in likely Democrat, but probably right about the line there between leans and likely, right about five points. Uh, what do we have next? We have Texas. So Texas is likely Republican. In the past, Texas has been very reliably safe Republican, but uh, with all the illegal immigrants, perhaps, who knows if that has something to do with it. Um, with that... And of course, with um, just more people moving into it, Texas getting a little bit more liberal. Trump won the state by about five points, as I recall, in 2020. So I think it's going to be likely Republican here. Um, so again, that five to nine point range. Uh, moving on to Ohio, not exactly safe yet, I don't think, Republican, but it's certainly not a battleground state anymore like it once was. I think it's on the high side of likely Republican, though. I think it's probably right about that cutoff line of nine points and likely. Okay, <clears throat> and now, being at 219 Republican, 216 Democrats, things are close. Let's get in to the fun part, the meat of the video, so to speak, which is the swing state. So, Georgia leans Republican by about four and a half to five points, in my opinion. So it's close to likely, but it's not quite. I'm gonna put it in leans Republican. Uh, Biden did win it in 2020, allegedly. But um, I definitely think Trump is going to flip this state back from his <coughs> alleged loss in 2020. Um, probably right about a five-point margin, I think. It could be a little bit lower. Um, but, and I'm losing track in my notes here. I have to have these notes to guide me or I get way off track and this video ends up being 30 minutes long. So um, I definitely think Trump's going to flip Georgia. But um, I think it'll be right about a five-point average, like I said. Uh, margin polling averages there we go back on track polling average from RCP has about five and a half point lead for Trump right now real clear politics um, can gathers all the reputable pollsters and combines them to see uh, what the average poll number is and for Trump it's about five and a half points right now a lead in Georgia uh, for now we'll be conservative no pun intended <laughs> in our estimates but we're gonna say right now that Trump is going to win the state but we'll put it in likely as opposed to leans Okay, just like that, Trump is making up ground from 2020 already. Okay, moving on, we have Nevada. It's one that I've predicted to flip for a while now. I thought Joe Lombardo and Adams Laxalt would both win in 2022. As it turned out, Lombardo won. Laxalt barely, barely lost by 0.1 cent to an incumbent, Kathleen Cortez Masto. Um, believe it or not, RCP, again, the average, actually shows a big lead for Trump right now. 5.6%. Uh, is the average lead in the polls for Trump now. I don't think it's gonna be that big. I think that's a bit, a uh, little overly hopeful, dare I say. But I think this is the year Nevada does finally flip for the GOP as they've been hoping and targeting and trying to get it to flip. We're gonna wear, rate it as leans Republican. So that's two swing states already flipped from 2020 from Biden to Trump. Okay, we're now at the point where Trump only has to win Michigan or Pennsylvania or two other swing states, I think, in order to clinch the nomination, if I'm not missing my guess. Um, you know what? I just realized I had that written in my notes here. I got confused, and that's because I missed, and that's why I have my notes here. 
I miss North Carolina. I forgot to tell you North Carolina. I don't think it's exactly a battleground state. The Dems are trying to take it over. I don't think they're going to this year. We're rating North Carolina as a likely Republican state. Uh, probably in the neighborhood of five to six points, I imagine. Might end up, end up being a lean Trump state, but we're going to put it in the bottom level of likely right now. So, as I was saying, my notes were correct. Uh, right now, Trump only has to win Michigan with its 15 electoral votes or Pennsylvania with its 19 to win the nomination, or uh, win the election already, or he has to win Michigan and Arizona and Wisconsin or a combination of those. Uh, moving on to Wisconsin... Wisconsin did narrowly go to Biden in 2020, assuming the results there were legit. And like I said, for the sake of the video, we're assuming they were. Uh, they voted for Biden by a measly 0.6 points. Uh, currently, the RCP, RCP average, got to slow down there, is an exactly one point lead for Trump. Assuming it's legit, I'm going to say that this state does go for Trump, but it's going to be close. Um, I definitely think it could be very close. It might be higher than one point. Um, it might be higher than our one and a half point margin of tilt Republican. Um, but right now, I don't feel like it's going to go for Trump to Trump drastically. So I think we're going to say Wisconsin is a tilt Republican state. It could end up being leans. It could end up tilting Democrat. But we're going to say for now, Wisconsin tilts Republican. Okay. Trump is now three electoral votes away from clinching the nomination. Can he do it with our next state? That would be Pennsylvania. As of late, the polls in Pennsylvania are very slightly toward Trump, but this is a state that in recent years has trended a little bit more toward the left, in my opinion. Uh, RCP average is currently a 0.6 lead for Trump, so Trump can use to poll well in these states, but I think 2024 has the potential to be a good year for Republicans and Trump as a whole across the whole nation, <clears throat> but I'm skeptical of how well we'll do in Pennsylvania. Um, I don't think we're going to flip the Senate seat in Pennsylvania. And I think the Democrat there is actually going to have a strong showing, more than likely. I don't think we have a great ground game in Pennsylvania. It's a powerful incumbent there, as I broke down in my uh, video, which again, linked in description. But I don't think we're going to flip that. I think it's going to be close presidentially, but I think that strong Senate showing might actually help carry Biden to the finish line. Um, it's going to be really close. I think Pennsylvania is going to tilt Democrat. We're going to put it here. And I think the Democrats do win Pennsylvania barely. And with that, we at last have some good news for the Dr. Jill Biden's husband. Okay, we're now down to three states. Biden has to win all three to keep the presidency. Will Trump take them over? We'll find out. Here we go. Let's see if it's a plausible scenario if Biden can win these three states. So next up, we have Minnesota. Minnesota is a similar case to Pennsylvania, actually. Um, they recently trended toward the left and almost always vote Democrat in the presidential elections. The current RCP average only has Biden up three, but he is leading. Um, and <clears throat> if I'm being honest, I just can't see Minnesota flipping back toward Trump. Barring something happening that makes this election a landslide before election day, uh, the incumbent Senator Amy Klobuchar, bless her heart, is up for re-election. I think she's new very well there against her Republican challenger. I think she may help Biden, much like Pennsylvania. It may be somewhat close, um, but in a state Biden desperately needs to keep, I think he's going to. And I think we're going to put it, not quite until, I think we're going to go leans Democrat for this. I'm a little bit more confident in that than I am in Pennsylvania. And now on to two of the most controversial states of 2020, Michigan and Arizona. Arizona. Biden has not won a poll in Arizona, get this, since April of last year. Current RCP polling average currently has Trump at a 5.2% lead over Biden. I don't think Trump will win by that much, and I'm not completely convinced Trump will win at all. But if Maricopa County can get their votes counted in, I don't know, a week, two weeks, if they can get their act together in Maricopa County, there's no shenanigans there, and they get their votes counted, and that's legit, as again, we're assuming it to be. And I think Arizona is going to go for Trump, clinching in the election. Um, I think it's going to be very close, as it usually is. But for now, I'm going to put Arizona in the tilt Trump category, putting him at 278 electoral votes and handing him the presidency. Um, I am currently predicting Arizona to be a split ticket, however. Spoiler alert. I have the U.S. Senate race rated right now as tilt blue. That's Ruben Gallego against Kerry Lake. You can go watch my Senate video breaking that down. Now, at the time, I will say Kirsten Sinema was still potentially in the race. She just dropped out. So that definitely helps Gallego not splitting the vote. Um, so we'll see. Lake could win that as well. She may end up dragging Trump down. We'll see, but 
if Arizona goes Trump's way, even if it doesn't go our way in the Senate, Trump has the presidency. And lastly, Michigan. <clears throat> Trump currently leads in Michigan with an average of three and a half points per RCP once again. Biden has not won a poll in the state since last November, and there's been a lot of them taken in Michigan, trust me, uh, which would seem to be a good sign for Trump, provided his support doesn't peak too early. Michigan's a, a tricky one to predict, I'm not going to lie. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if RFK comes into play a bit in the state. Uh, we get to see a lot of third-party votes. Um, there are no huge outlying of factors that would affect this race necessarily either, like the uh, Minnesota and Pennsylvania races, the Senate races there. There is a Senate race in Michigan, but I think that's going to be extremely close. And I had that. I'm not going to spoil which way I had it tilted, but I did have that race rated as tilt So um, in my Senate video. So that could be an extremely um, close race, and I think it's going to be in the Senate, and I think it probably will be for the presidency as well. But I'm not convinced the presidency will be quite as tight as the Senate. Um, however, since the polling has Trump leading by three and a half on average, I don't really have a reason to go against the polling on this one, even though sometimes I like to do that, um, other than maybe just a gut feeling, but I think we're going to go Michigan as tilt Trump once again. Could be leans Trump potentially, but again, we're trying to do this conservatively, so I think we're going to say Michigan is at last a tilt Trump, and that will... Get our final, let's see how that's, uh, <clears throat> 493, that's 538, haha, <laughs> right, 538 electoral votes, which means Trump wins 293 to 245, Biden will have to flip uh, Pennsylvania and Arizona or Wisconsin, Michigan, or some combination of those to get this back. Definitely an uphill battle for Democrats in 2024, which is an unusual sign for an incumbent. Uh, it is extremely likely that this will be a very close election, obviously. And we better be hoping and praying that uh, it is indeed legit and the Democrats can't just control it. But you know who can control it? And it's a good thing to know, the Lord. The Lord can control it. And it's very comforting to know that, isn't it? Uh, with all that said, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Do you agree with my predictions? And if not, do you just disagree on the states that you think Biden will win or lose or Trump will win or lose? Win or lose? Or just do you think Trump is going to win? Or do you think Biden's going to win? You can disagree with me. And I'd be very interested to hear what your thoughts are on RFK. I may have to do a whole separate video about him. We'll see about that, breaking that down later on perhaps. His candidacy, he's trying to get on the ballot now, and he could he could play a serious role in this election, unlike most third-party candidates. And of course, don't forget to check out my video predicting who will be, who will control the U.S. Senate after November. That will be linked in the description, and I should be showing up as an end card right about... Hello folks, so I just found out that apparently the YouTube algorithm really likes it when you watch someone's video and then you go on straight to watch another video from the same channel. That apparently helps boost that channel in the algorithm. So if you want to do that for me, maybe for example that US Senate video I was talking about in this one, that would be great and be very appreciated. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Fight and Revive with Adam Boyer. We're already being shadow banned on YouTube. So if you would like this specific video and then subscribe to the channel, that would be greatly appreciated and help us reach more people. Thank you for watching.